Okay, in this video we're checking out the uh, full speed Turbo Whip 4K. Another one of these uh, Cine Whip, Micro Cine Whips with the Tarsier 4K camera. I've already done review videos on the camera already. I'll put links to those down in the, down in the description in this uh, video. I'm not going to cover the details on the camera itself. I've already done that in previous videos. I'm going to cover the uh, frame and the build here. So this, this build here comes about $200. Different receiver options are available to you. Uh, this one here happens to be the uh, full speed D8 uh, Free Sky receiver. I think it does come in Crossfire, Spectrum, and uh, XM Plus, and also um, I believe FlySky versions as well. So you can check out the website and see which receiver version you want, or you can just get one without receiver. Now, um, this is basically a 1.9 inch prop setup, so they're using the uh, HQ 1.9 by 3 by 3 prop here and you can see they're kind of bull nosed and uh, runs right alongside the duct here um, which gives it a, uh, basically an aerodynamic effect here um, with more thrust and also more efficiency so you get pretty good flight time. Um, and this design here is really really similar to the way that the one that works on the squirt uh, but basically scaled down from 3 inch to 2 inch so I noticed that even though we're running a 1.9 inch prop here, um, by the way, the motor is, I think it's an 1104 motor, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think the camera will be able to focus. Let's see, maybe from this side. Yeah, it's 1104, and I don't remember the KV. Okay, yeah, so it's a 5500 KV, and that's not going to come out on the camera. It's a 5500 KV. Motor. So you, uh, I was running this on a 554S battery. You could even run this on a uh, up to a 854S. Um, there is also an option for putting a mount here, a TPU mount for a GoPro. If you want to use like a session on, as well as a Tarsier, you could do that. Not sure if you'll be able to carry all that extra weight plus an 850, but yeah, I was able to carry an 850 without any additional mounts on there. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the motor and the duct setup here, it does feel like it does have a little bit more control and a little bit more thrust because of the duct system, whereas the other models like the uh, Cine B, Cine Pro, and the Beta FPV model have basically a prop guard, so this duct here has no effect on, on those models where it has an effect on this one. And you can see here on the bottom, you have the same kind of similar setup here where the uh, carbon fiber goes all the way out and then the duct is screwed into the ends here so just keep the net frame nice and stiff um, and that helps with flight characteristics as well. Um, the rest of the setup here we have an F4 flight controller, a 28 amp 4 and ESD, I think it's D-Shot 600 only. They did design this pretty interestingly where the Tarsier um, SD card slot is accessible so you don't have to push any ducts down like you do on the GEPRC model. But the USB port for the TARC is blocked. So I, I actually prefer that to be open so I can plug in my computer, plug in my USB cable from the computer right into there and pull the files off of there because of the weird format that this card has. It's like um, you have to actually format the card inside the camera via the app. Otherwise it doesn't record. Um, probably make a video about that because uh, people are very confused about that. Video transmitter here does have a generic circular polarized antenna here. Does I think it's some sort of Pagoda antenna, and the my, the USB port is sticking out the back here, which is nice. It's accessible for the flight controller, and then you have the your uh, Cadex um, little dongle here for your controller board that's also accessible as well. So they did um, did a little thought here in terms of the design. The buttons, of course, are also accessible from this side. So, um, yeah, the only thing that is blocked is the USB port on the Tarsier camera. So, uh, I think overall, not too bad. Not a whole lot of jello in this one here with this uh, carbon fiber setup here. The camera doesn't really move too much. You can adjust the angle if you want to go faster, but this is really meant for a slow flight in sort of indoor situations. And, um, yeah, I mean, obviously you could try and do accurate with it, but uh, I, as I say in previous videos on this, not really my thing uh, doing air with this. I'd rather just go fly a 3 inch or 2.5 inch without any prop guards or ducts and get maximum performance rather than trying to do acro with something like this. Okay, so here is the weight. No battery and definitely heavier than 
some of them out there. I don't remember the weights of the other ones exactly. I'll have a roundup video with all this information and at some point in the near future after I get the rest of these. So stay tuned for that. But this one weighs 115 and then with the battery altogether it's coming in at 187 with the 550 and then with the 850 which I don't have on hand. Um, yeah, it's going to probably be uh, a little bit over 200. Anyway guys, here's the flight footage and yeah, let me know what you guys think of this 4K footage compared to the other ones, the Cine B and the Cine Pro and the Beta FPV models. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think out of all these, this is probably the one that has uh, the, the better design with the ducts here and uh, providing that aerodynamic effect to provide better thrust. Um, that does look very similar to the squirt. It's just a two-inch version of the squirt instead of a three-inch. So I think that's kind of cool in that sense. But anyway, let me go ahead, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And here's some foot flight, more flight footage for you, guys. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.